Hello everybody and a good day to you all today. I have some entertainment news for you and I hope you enjoy. First I'll be starting off with NBC's miniseries, 10 episode miniseries, Emerald City. They have cast Vincent D'Onofrio to play The Wizard of Oz. Now, this is not going to be a strict adaptation of the, um, of the classic tale. They had cast True Detective actor Adria Arjona as to play a, a 20 year old Dorothy Gale transported to the, to the Oz with her canine police dog. So, already right there, totally different. And Mr. D'Onofrio, he's going to be playing a man of science trapped in a world of magic. Now this is going to be like NBC's take on, how you say, Game of Thrones. Just not as dark or as crazy, but it's going to have that kind of feel and tone to, to, the, to the show. Because it's going to have competing kingdoms, um, lethal warriors, dark magic, and bloody battles of supremacy. So like I said, like a, a Game of Thrones, but for NBC. Now the show was originally put to come out in 2013 to, to 2014, but things kind of fell through. But now things are back on track. Things are going forward, and they have um, David Schooner and um, Sean Cassidy on board to produce the film, to produce the the, the mini series. So I'm looking forward to this. I like, I like Vincent D'Onofrio, and I have been enjoying his performance on the Marvel's Netflix series Daredevil, which, which I highly recommend. So if you like your performance there, hopefully he'll hopefully he'll bring that same skill and ability for the new for the for the miniseries. Up next we have the Michael Knots. It's gonna be a live action film. And they they have they have chosen um Puss in Boots screenwriter Tom Wheeler to write the movie based off of the Hasbro toy line. Now, Paramount Pictures and Bad Robot developed a project back in um, 2009 with Zombieland and Deadpool writers um, Paul Rignett and Riet Reese, who were hired in 2011 to write the screenplay for that movie. But things didn't work out. So now, so now Wheeler is going to base his script off of, um, off of their draft. So he's going to be picking up where they left off. Now, I don't know too, I don't know too much about the Micronauts. But what what I learned was it was it was a it started in nineteen seventy four in Japan and at the time it was called Michael Men. And then it was the toy line was um, imported to the United States two years later by the Mega Corporation and it was and, it, and the name was changed from Michael Men to Michael Knotts. Why? I, I don't know. And the Mar Marvel Marvel Comics published a, a comic book series back in nineteen seventy nine. But they fleshed out the story a little bit more, and they focused on a, a microscopic microverse, and the, it, it was about a team coming together to take down a bad guy called um, Baron Kurzar. Now the series didn't last until um, ended into in, in 1984, but it had a lot of reprints, and it, uh, it had another, another little mini series, and a second volume which went from 1984 to 1986, and then in the early 2000s. Image and um, Devil's Due Publishing tried to re resurrect the series again, but it still didn't really last that long. Now, for the third part of the movie, we have Ant Man. The Ant Man movie. Now, I enjoyed the first Ant Man movie, I enjoyed it a whole lot. The performances in that picture was great. Michael Douglas, Paul Rudd, Evangeline Lilly all did amazing jobs. So now they're trying to get the director for that movie, um, Peyton Reed, to come back to, to, to direct the second movie, The Ant-Man and the Wobs, which is not, not, which not going to be released until July 6th of 2018. But for right now, he has not been officially um, on board yet. There has been an announcement of him actually be, being the director again. But the only people that actually do have um, officially part of, the sh uh, part of the project is Paul Rudd and Evangeline Lilly. It, it, there's no, there's no, they're not even, they, they don't even have a screen a screenwriter yet. But I'm looking forward to this because I really did enjoy the, I really did enjoy the first Ant Man. So hopefully the second, the second Ant Man and the Wasp will be even better than the first. Fingers are crossed. 
Now to something else that's going to be going from animation to live action. Ghost in the Shell. And they already announced a long time ago that this is going to be a movie. And Scarlett Johansson has already been on, on, on board to star as the main character. Which sparked a lot of controversy because of a, a white person playing a, um, a character based off a Japanese animation. I totally understand that. I totally get that. I can see why a lot of people are upset about, about this. But I like Scarlett Johansson. And I kind of understand why these things happen. Because a lot of these um, Japanese animes, movies, and cartoons make their main characters, well, look look white. Which I, they probably do this because they're trying to make them like more universal, more accepting to all over the whole world when they, when they see it. That could, that could be the case. So when Hollywood sees these things, they see these characters who actually look white, they choose white actors to play the parts. I mean, other than the fact that them, the characters have Japanese names, and they are set in Japan. Most of the characters, I mean, look white. I mean, you have like Naruto, for instance, um, Ichigo from Bleach, and many other characters. But I'm looking forward to this. This movie may be good, and they have um they have they have a director um, I got, um Rupert um Sanders to direct the film, and the movie is going to be going to production in New Zealand, and it's not going to come out until March. 31st, 2017. So, I can't really say if it's going to be bad or, any, or good yet because I haven't seen a trailer or anything. But until then, until I get an actually good feel of it, I, I see the tone, how the, how the performance is going to be, I'm, I'm, I'm still hopeful. Now for all of you who love Power Rangers, I have some Power Rangers news for you. Two people have been cast for the Power Rangers movie. Now you have um, a new, a new up and comer, and you also have a person who's still really new, but but having something out there you actually can see. The new up and comer you have, um, I hope I say, hope I say his name right, the, the Cray Montgomery. He has been chosen to play the Red Ranger, and you have from the from the movie Me and Earl and, and the Dying Girl, R. J. Siler, he was playing the Blue Ranger. Now, the Lions Games Power Rangers film is going to follow the events of the television series Power Rangers Dino Charge. It's going to be shot in Vancouver, and it's going to be from um, January to April 2016, and it's going to feature Scorpina as the main villain of the movie. Now, I never really watched a lot of Power Rangers, the television series, but I did see the first... Power Rangers movie in theaters, and I enjoyed that a whole lot. I just could never get into the show. But I'm looking forward to this movie. Hopefully it'll be a whole lot of fun. And if you have been enjoying the, the Power Rangers franchise, hey, now, you, now you get another, another movie everybody can enjoy. And the movie not be coming out in the theaters until um, January 13th of 2017. Now, there's going to be a, a children's book it's going to be adapted for the big screen. And according to the um, Hollywood Reporter, Edgar Wright is going to be directing the movie. And Johnny Depp is going to star in the movie and produce the movie. And, and Brett McKenzie, the one half of Flight of the, Congor Flight of the Concords, is going to be writing the screenplay. And it's going to be the children's book based by, um, by, by Gaiman that came out in 2013. Fortunately, the milk, which is supposed to be about um, a like time travel with breakfast cereal. I don't know how the two things go together. I never, read the, never I never read the book personally, but this sounds pretty interesting. It sounds like, like it's going to be weird, crazy, but a whole lot of fun. I'm looking forward to finding out. I'm looking forward to see how how, how it's going to be on the big screen, and it's going to be like a hybrid live action and animation. So they they, they can use them both together. In one movie, which sounds like it'll be a whole lot of fun and very interesting. The only thing I'm kind of concerned about is um about Johnny Depp. Even though I like Johnny Depp, and I think he did an amazing job in, in Black Mass, a movie I highly recommend. But a lot of times in these type of performance, where he plays play a, a sort of a character that's kind of whimsical and kind of out there, his performances could get kind of mm, not so good. But well, who knows? I'm looking forward to this. 
Maybe this might be fantastic. Maybe it'll blow our minds out of our heads how, how good it would be. So my fingers are crossed, hoping for the best. Now I'm leaving you, I'm going to leave you off with a trailer for a movie that's also kind of weird. Which is going to be um, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. I said this before, the first time I heard this, the concept that sounds so crazy, I could not see how it would work. But after watching the first trailer and this also this newer, newer trailer, I am totally looking forward to this. Other than Star Wars, which I really want to see, Star Wars looks really good. I cannot wait for December the 18th to come out so soon. But I want to see. Other than that, I want to see this movie too. It looks like it's gonna be a whole lot of fun. Just watching them kill zombies in the full Victorian dress. I'm on board. Well, that's all I gotta say about that. If you have any thoughts and opinions about anything that I just said, leave your comments down below. So, give my channel a big old like, hit the thumbs up, boom, and subscribe to my channel and share. I really would appreciate it. So, like I always say, in my dreams and in real life, I am the Ninja Rabbit. A peace out, a peoples.